Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Bit Workshop. Today we're starting the assembly of the Inventables X-Carve CNC machine. Now I've already laid the first set of components out here and they come from the pack which is marked Core Components. And I'll be following the Inventables videos and I'll only be pointing out those areas where I think that you need to pay extra attention. Now everything comes in uh, little uh, packets uh, not unlike uh, this one uh, and it's labelled on there, there's a, a product code number on there uh, and all of these uh, are referenced in the, uh, the videos and the written instructions that uh, you'll find on the website that, that go with the videos and so uh, I would advise you to keep uh, anything you've not uh, used yet in its original packet. That way uh, you can go along and find a, a M5 by 35 button head screw uh, very easily because its name is there and it's got its um, uh, part number so you can tie that up uh, with the instructions. So don't take anything out of the packets until you need them. One thing you do need to check uh, when you're assembling is knowing whether you've got the 500 millimeter or the 1000 millimeter uh, kit. Uh, you need to make sure you follow the correct instructions uh, on the website. And it will say uh, whether it's the 500 or the 1000 uh, in the header line and it tells you then what components you need. So just watch that. Now the very first inventable video is called the X-Carve Assembly and this is what you need. You need the X carriage uh, extrusion, which is here. You need a total of eight of the V wheels. That's what I have here. You need two idler wheels. You need two aluminium spacers. Uh, there's a pack with just two screws in, and these are the M5 35 millimeter long flat Allen head screw. There's two of those, and that's all that's in their packet. You then need a total of six M5 nylon insert lock nuts. Two will be used uh, in this group here and four will be used in this group here. You also need four of the eccentric nuts. You need eight of these M5 by 25 button head cap screws. You need eight of the M5 washers that go with them. And you'll need your 8mm uh, wrench, uh, for the benefit of those in North America. This is a spanner. Uh, and uh, you'll also need the, uh, the second one down of the hex keys, which is there. Now this is the uh, X carriage extrusion, and I want just uh, to point out the parts to you that are important. I'm holding it with this U-shaped section uppermost, and it's just a single flange bit at the bottom here. Now, in the Inventables instruction, uh, the first two uh, screws are going to be put through these two countersunk holes, and that's for the idler wheels. And then if you look around the outside here, you'll see four holes in the uh, outer edges. Uh, the two at the top are a normal uh, size hole, which are just destined for this type of screw here. Uh, and the ones at the bottom, the larger ones, are destined to have uh, the... Uh, eccentric nuts uh, with the uh, uh, circular part of the nut sticking into that hole uh, which gives you the ability to adjust its position. If we turn that over we have the same uh, pattern here. The two bottom holes are for the eccentric nuts and the two top holes are through which the screws go like so. Now if you imagine I've slipped this uh, countersink uh, screw through that casting and so this is now going on on the inside. There's the spacer first and then uh, we have the bearing side of this idler wheel. That's the one with the most metal showing. Uh, it goes over next and that goes up against that spacer. And then finally we have a nylock nut. Now, if you've never come across these nylock nuts before, uh, they're very simple. There's a plastic uh, insert in the uh, inside of the top end. You might just be able to see it in the picture now. Uh, and that provides a locking function. But in order to screw them on, uh, you start with the other end of the thread. Uh, and that's the bit without the plastic. And that's therefore very easy to start that off in the hole, like so. 
and then you'll find when it, the thread uh, of the uh, bolt gets to the uh, plastic part inside the nut, uh, you then can't do any more with your fingers. You then have to use a tool. So that's the correct way to use that. Now, after I'd laid those components out, it only took me six minutes uh, to assemble this. The next stage is to mount uh, one of the stepper motors onto the X carriage assembly. And it's slightly different depending which motor you've got. I've got the NEMA uh, 23, uh, and for me, this, the uh, procedure is as follows. I'm going to mount uh, one of these uh, pulley blocks on the end here and then I'm going to mount the motor onto the uh, X carriage. And that's that uh, done, and I've ensured that the wires are pointing downwards as instructed. And if you look in there, you can see that the uh, little uh, pulley uh, block is on there. Now, when you come to uh, assembling the uh, Y plate assembly, uh, you really do need to look very carefully at the diagrams uh, that uh, are on the uh, website and, and where all the various holes are, so you know which holes uh, you're going to start putting uh, these idler wheels through, uh, for example. You've got to get that absolutely right. So look very, very carefully and compare what you're doing with what you see on the uh, website. Well, I've just done this first uh, Y plate. It's got um, a pair of these uh, idler uh, wheels here, and they've got the aluminium spacer underneath. And the screw going through is 35 millimeters long, so don't be surprised if you've got some uh, thread showing on this side. Then you've got the V pulleys here, and these are this time using 25 millimeter screws. And uh, what you do is you thread uh, a screw onto the V pulley, then a washer, and the washers, uh, and the washers here between the pulley and the plate, and then you put on a, a nut. Now, uh, with the uh, top two, that's here and here. Uh, those are the uh, nylon lock nuts, and the bottom two here uh, and here, uh, these are the eccentric uh, ones, uh, which have got the hole off centre. And in all cases, these V pulleys have a, a washer between the bearing and the side of the plate in there. And next we're going to fit the stepper motors onto the Y plates. And if you look at the diagrams that are uh, on the uh, website, uh, you'll, you'll see exactly uh, how to do this. And if you look at mine now, you'll see that the wires are in this, uh, on this side of the motor. Uh, the screws go in from the back with a washer, uh, and then we're just going to uh, put uh, nuts on each of the four screws. And that's the second one done. And if you look at them, they should be a mirror image. Now you may find with the screws that go into the terminal block that they're uh, a little bit stiff. Uh, if that's the case, just use a screwing action to get the screws uh, into uh, the plastic of the terminal block. And once it's in, it will look after itself. Now the limit switch for the uh, Y direction is fitted to the uh, left hand uh, Y plate and that's this one, it's the one that at this stage we've already mounted the drag chain end onto and it's going to go uh, just here. Now this next stage is slightly tricky. I've got the uh, Y plates, uh, the uh, one on the left here and the one on the right uh, as they would be when the machine's assembled and it's as though you're looking from the very front of the machine right now. And we've got to now add uh, the maker slide and that's this stuff. And one of them's got uh, the X-Carve logo on. This one will go at the front uh, between the two Y plates like so. And in the instructions uh, we're told to attach this one first to this uh, Y plate. So this is known as the left-hand Y plate, uh, and uh, it will go in uh, like so. And there's a pair of holes here. Uh, they're not slotted holes, they're just ordinary holes, and that's what we're going to use for this first process. Let me just show you the maker slide in a little bit more detail. Now, th this is the front piece of maker slide, and if you look along the front part of the profile uh, are these V-shaped uh, pieces, one here and one here. Uh, and these are the bits that the V pulleys uh, fit over. And this 
is the front of the front, so the, the, the V pulleys are going across uh, the very front edge here. Now in the instructions we're going to uh, attach this uh, left hand end first and because we're using the round holes, uh, that not the slotted holes, uh, we do not need washers for the four screws. It's the two at this end and the two at the other end. So uh, we're just going to do these without washers and the advice is to use a little bit of oil and I'm just using ordinary machine oil and one has to be really really careful to get these self-tapping screws going in as they should and the trick is to apply a reasonable amount of pressure as you're screwing and then it will find its own way and they recommend uh, not to uh, screw the first one in fully because that gives you a little bit more um, ability to get the second one in. Now if you've never done self-tapping screws before don't be put off by this stage. Uh, it is just a question of technique and as you uh, screw, uh, as you apply the radial action you've got to also push. So you're pushing this way as you're screwing the screw in and that makes it a lot easier. Now in the instructions it tells us to take a second piece of the maker slide and this has no logos on it at all uh, and we're going to attach it again to the left hand uh, Y plate. Now this time this V section is nearest to me and so the two V sections are opposite each other. Uh, one is here on this profile and the other is at the front on this profile. And the process is exactly the same. A little bit of oil on the thread. And this time we're going to use a washer because the holes it's going through are slotted. Same technique as before. Pushing as you turn, which helps that to go in as it should. And just before you get to the very end, before it's tight, so it's still slightly loose, we're going to put the other one in. And remember, we need the washer because it's the slotted hole in the Y plate that we're using. Right, having made sure that this rear piece of maker slide is loose enough to uh, be able to move, uh, we're now going to put this X carriage uh, onto the maker slide, lining up the V pulleys here uh, with these uh, V sections of profile. Now you've got to be very gentle at this stage because what you mustn't do is to force uh, the uh, pulleys past the end uh, or over the, uh, the, the V section here because you don't want to damage the edges of these pulleys. So that fits on nice and smoothly. And before you get too excited, uh, you have to put uh, two of these uh, little uh, flat uh, nut inserts into the rear piece of maker slide. Uh, one and then two. So that's that done and now we can attach the other uh, Y plate. And to do this, because I'm right handed, I'm just moving this around uh, like so. And I'm going to make sure that this plate matches the orienta orientation of the other one. So it's going to go on just here. And we do this in exactly the same way as before, remembering that the washers uh, go uh, on the screws that are going through the elongated slots here. And once you've done this a couple of times, you'll find putting in self-tapping screws in the end of this type of profile is actually not that difficult at all. And that's that stage complete. Now we're going to put this to one side uh, in a minute. Now just note that it's running on these uh, V wheels at the bottom. So when you put it down, uh, make sure it's not going to roll off uh, your bench or surface that you're putting it on. 